<laughs> okay, um, we're going to be here doing chapter one of um, Manku and a quick summary. And, and the chapter starts with scarcity. And scarcity is unlimited wants and limited needs. Unlimited wants and limited needs. And I think it's important to realize everyone faces scarcity. You take like the richest man in the world, like Elon Musk, he doesn't have all the money. So like he doesn't have unlimited money and he also doesn't have all the time. So there's a scarcity of time. So there's a scarcity of all products and, and services. And it's good to keep that in mind. He then, then defines economics, how we manage our scarce resources. So economics is the science of managing our scarce resources, okay? And then he starts talking about um, trade-offs. So uh, principle one, people face trade-offs. And there's a trade-off between efficiency, which is um, what the most we could get out of our resources. It's using our resources totally efficiently and a quality where everyone gets a, the same piece of the pot. So quality would be like, um, if we're making $100 and there's five of us, we each get 20. Um, efficiency is using that $100 to the best, the most effective. Now, why is there a trade-off? Because sometimes when you're getting a quality and everyone's getting the same, it doesn't, um, there's no motivation or incentive or sometimes for people to work harder to get, you know, to be more efficient, to get things better if we're all splitting it up equally. So there's that trade-off between efficiency and equality. The cost something is what you give up to get it. That is really the definition of opportunity cost. The cost of something is what you give up to get it. Now, there's two terms that you should be familiar with. One is trade-offs. So trade-offs is everything I gave up to make this video. Like I could be grading papers, I could be hitting golf balls, I could be taking a nap, um, I could be reading a book, I could be hanging out with friends, I could be talking to my family. All those are trade-offs. The opportunity cost is the, the next best thing. What would I be doing if I wasn't doing this video? That would be the opportunity cost. Okay? And then they talk about rational people think at the margins. And um, rational is like, do what's best. It's really like best economically. And like everyone doesn't really think rationally, but in our course, we're gonna assume all decisions are rational. The second is marginal. And marginal is usually the next unit. So like marginal cost, which we'll get into is the cost of the next unit. Marginal benefit would be, how much am I benefiting from using the next unit? People respond to incentives. And incentives, I think, are work, is a word you're commonly gonna know. Something that induces people to act, okay? Something that inspires you to do, do something, all right? Now, if people raise prices, there's less incentive to buy that product because it costs more. So quantity demands it will decrease. And obviously, it goes the other way. If people lower prices, quantity demand um, would go up. Now, we're going to talk about trade later in, in the semester, but trade can make everyone better. And, and, and what happens with trade is it allows countries to specialize in what they're good at and trade the things they're not good at. Like you could sometimes trade for resources you don't have. You could sometimes trade for maybe things that are too expensive for your country to make and specialize in things that you are good at. All right. And so you're trading you're exporting, which is like the United States is trading outside of their country on things that they have low opportunity costs, and therefore they're importing, that means they're bringing things in from foreign countries on things that they either don't have or are very expensive to make. Okay. Markets are usually a good way to organize the economy. Uh, and this, you know, he, he talks about like two markets here, and one would be like the um, market economy that we have in the United States. And the market economy in the United States, like households and firms, they decide what goods and services to make, how much, and who makes it. Where command economy or central economy, which is you know a lot of times seen in communist countries, they still have to answer those three questions. 
what goods and services are made, how much and who. The only difference is where in a market economy firms and households decide, in a planned or central economy, the government decides. Uh, and now, you know, economists are not really um, big on government intervention, but sometimes on what we call market failures, we need government to intervene. A market failure is when the market left on its own does not really allocate resources efficiently. And, um, and a lot of times an externality is a good example. What is an externality? Externality is when a third party either benefits or is hurt by a transaction that they were not involved in. So let me give you an example. Say like I'm doing fireworks on July 4th and I'm keeping my neighbor up. That would be a negative externality because my neighbor did not like purchase the fireworks or have anything to do with it, but they're just getting kept up by the loud noise of the fireworks. All right, so that would be a negative externality. And there is to discourage negative externalities like you know cigarettes or pollution. A lot of times government puts a tax on these items to discourage as much use of them as if they didn't have the tax. Okay. A country standard of living, uh, you should remember that the more productive a country could be, the higher standard of living. Like the United States post-World War II really had a monopoly on the world uh, economy. And that allowed us to be very productive, productivity went up, and standard of living for most of our people went up. So the higher the productivity, the higher the standard of living. Okay. Um, and then at the end, he talks about inflation. And remember, inflation is a general rising of prices. All right, it's not like one. Um, it's not like one item is going up. It's like generally most items are going up. And a lot of times, inflation can be caused by uh, printing too much money. All right. And then the last um, thing, and, and this is definitely a macro thing, but they put it in the first chapter is there's a trade-off between inflation and unemployment. Now, why would that trade-off exist? Well, when there's in inflation, people usually have more money, so they're gonna buy more goods. As you're buying more goods, people have to make more goods, so therefore we need more workers. People are selling those goods, so we need more workers. So as inflation goes up, we're hiring more workers, so unemployment goes down, all right? So that is the trade-off. All right, that's basically the first chapter. It's probably one of the few chapters where we have no graphs or anything to explain, but I hope that helps. Have a great.